I've had my say on this on uh, uh, weekend breakfast this morning. I think he was out of order. Antonio Conte, I think he was not only calling out his players, I think he was calling out the hierarchy at Tottenham as well. I think his position is untenable. Where do you stand on it, Darren Ambrose? A, as a former player, mm. if you were if you were Oliver Skip and you were picking up the paper this morning or you were listening to the radio and you heard your manager speaking in those terms, and B, as a Spurs fan, where do you stand on the Conte? Should he stay or is it now time to make a change? Well, I would have been surprised if I was a player, a manager publicly calling me out, but then I'd have looked who it was in terms of Antonio Conte. He's done it before, so you know, you'd have to accept that. But... I mean, two minds, to be honest. He was honest. Um, he was speaking facts, to be honest, a, a lot of it. Um, he, he called out the club um, in particular. And that, that's that been done in terms of Poch and Jose. They've recently done that. Um, I said, I mean, the fact is, he knew what he was coming into. He knew who Daniel Levy, Joe Lewis were. Um, so why he, 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 he thinks this is any different, he can make it any different, I don't know. I think... Um, it seems like he's hated it from day one. He's been disinterested. Um, but essentially, the buck, the buck stops with, with Levy and Joe Lewis. You, you, you try and appease the fans by signing a superstar, an elite manager that doesn't fit the, the, the system of the Spurs players. Um, so you're hiding behind that. I think you, you sacked a serial cup winner on the eve of a cup final and replaced him with Ryan Mason, his first managerial role. Uh, that was a, a ridiculous decision. Um, However, saying that, if you're Antonio Conte, you can't you can't do what what you've done. Um, and I've, I find, to a certain extent, you're hiding behind your previous success. You're hiding behind the trophies you've won at, at previous clubs. Are you saying you're at, yesterday's man? At, at this club, y- your tactics are woeful. Y- you've essentially you're playing such negative football. You've got essentially what is the best or one of the best number nines in Premier League history. And you're playing such negative defensive style and you never adapt. You never have a plan B. Um, I think Joe Lewis, and, and I'm going to call Joe Lewis out as well because he, he seems to he seems to get away with a lot of it. And, and Daniel Levy, you, you need to swallow your pride. Um, either get an up-and-coming up manager and build the football club and, and take it year by year. Or, you, like I said, swallow your pride. Admit you were wrong in 2019 getting rid of Pochettino. Go back and re-sign him. And um, you're lucky to have the support that you have. You're lucky that the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium gets packed out week in, week out, knowing you're potentially going home and your weekend's ruined. I just think you need to you need to give the support some hope, do the right thing, or sell up. Did I've you got- find it a bit strange, though? I mean, it, it was a draw. OK, it was a... It, I didn't think it was a penalty. I'm not going to touch on that too much because it shouldn't have got to that. They didn't go out and get annihilated. Okay, they were three one up, but they drew. They drew the game. They're still in the top four. Okay, a few teams have got game in hand, in hand over them. That's fine. The players let themselves down yesterday. They know that. I just found the timing of it was premeditated, to be honest. Yeah, I agree. International break coming up. I'm sure he's going to be back off uh, uh, to Italy for at least part of that. I don't think Antonio Conte uh, will want to come back. We will see what happens uh, during the next uh, fortnight, during that international break. I have got a table here uh, of the biggest spending clubs in the last two transfer windows. Tottenham are fifth. Are you surprised by that? Fifth biggest spenders in the last two transfer windows combined. Brighton, who have games in hand, if they win them, will be above Spurs. Not even in the top ten. Manchester United, who everybody says has lavished... Uh, their new manager, Eric Ten Hag, with cash. They're not in the top 10 in the so last two the transfer top, windows the top combined. Have we, got them, have we got them there? Well, Arsenal are right up there. Yep. Newcastle, West Ham, uh, obviously spent big last summer uh, to support David Moyes. I Not, mean, Nottingham uh, Forest with their 54 additions. Wolves, who spent big you, in January. If you look at the spending then, we're, we're about where we should be in the league, to be honest. And, and Yeah, but he's, like be, said, he's, fifth, being, he's being outperformed. You yes, know, he is Roberto being outperformed. Deserbi. Like I said, his tactics are, are, are woeful. He, he doesn't adapt. He has. I was listening to Max Rushton this morning. He hasn't got a plan B. And for an elite manager to not have a plan B, something's wrong. Now, can he have a plan B with the players he's got? So that's down to Daniel Levy and Joe Lewis not recruiting he's the got right the best, players. He's got the best number nine in the world, arguably. And Harry probably Kane. one of the worst defensive lines as well, in my opinion. Not in the world, but in the Premier League. Uh, Tottenham fans, give us a call, 0371722344. I was just going to make the point there, Roberto De Zerbi has just taken Brighton into an FA Cup semi-final. 
he spent barely anything to improve his squad in January. He came in after the summer window was closed because he replaced Graham Potter. They could well finish above Spurs in the table. How can Antonio Conte blame the board and blame the players when Brighton are having a better season, arguably, than Spurs? Uh, get in touch. 8 to 89 uh, on the text. You can tweet us at TalkSport. This is The Boot Room.